Welcome back. So some of you may have noticed there hasn't been a lot of videos in the last uh, six months or so, and to a large degree that's because I've been preparing this new Python library to help you guys access the RESTful API, which is now free and included in HP EIMC. So as of 7.2, the EAPI, as it's known, is absolutely included in both standard and enterprise. Uh, and this it does include for older customers as well. So if you already bought it, it's already yours to use. And you can start accessing the RESTful API and start getting a, your, your toes in the pool of automation, as it were. Um, today we're going to look over really three steps, which is installing Python, um, installing PyCharm, which is just an interactive development environment. Uh, it's one that I like to use, but again, you can use whatever you want. And then we're going to install the uh, Py HPE IMC and the JuPyTer or IPython notebook libraries uh, so we can get prepped for some other videos that are going to be coming in the very near future. Let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Python website, which as you saw is www.python.org. We're going to go to Downloads, and you're going to grab the newest version of Python, which in this case uh, for me is OSX and Python 3.5. Uh, again, um, Python 2.7.3.5, the library should actually work on both, but all the development and the majority of the testing is all done on 3. So that's what we're going to use here. So we're going to go through, and we're just going to click you know, through all the buttons here, agree, agree the license, and away we go. Once this is all done, you're going to have to put in your username and password. Um, you know, basically figure out your OS. If you're doing this on Windows, which I am not going to make another video on just for Windows, uh, you do want to make sure that there is a checkbox that um, you want to add the Python to your path. So the Python directory with all the program files in it, there's a checkbox that says add that to the Windows path. So make sure you grab that or some stuff might not work the way you expect it to. Okay, now let's move on to PyCharm. So now we're going to install PyCharm, which is available at jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. So I've already downloaded it here, so we're just going to go and, and directly install it. Uh, PyCharm is an interactive development environment, and there's other ones available. Um, Sublime, you could use actually the native Python IDE that, that you've already installed while installing Python 3.5. Uh, you have options here is what I'm saying. You could use uh, Vim, VI, right? Um, use whatever you're comfortable with. There is a community edition of PyCharm. For me, I just find it easy to work with. Uh, definitely, as you as you go down this coding journey, if you choose to go down that journey, feel free to, to try a few things out and find what works for you. That's the most important thing here. So when PyCharm is up and running, basically we just drag over to the applications directory on a Mac here. The install on Windows is extremely straightforward as well. And then we'll go in to the HPE Enterprise GitHub site and uh, grab the Python library directly so you can have all the source files and examples and other things that I've left in there as well. So here we are on github.com. So for those of you who don't know about GitHub, it is like the Facebook for software developers. So at Hewlett Packard Enterprise Networking, which is the name of the main repository, we can go down and find a repository here called PyHPEIMC. All right, so it'll take you back. If you, you actually haven't seen IMC for some reason, you found this video, you can go to networking, hpe.com networking slash IMC. You could grab the library directly from that little GitHub file there. You can see we've got the examples directories here, as well as all the code for the library. Um, if you've got GitHub Desktop, which is makes it really easy to use, GitHub, then you can click on that little button and you will be taken directly to the PyHPE library. And then you can just right click, open in Finder, and you'll now see that we've got all of the files here for this entire library, which is kind of a good thing, right? Including all the example files, which are in IPython notebook or Jupyter notebook format, which we will take a look at in future videos. Now that we've got all the software and files installed, we're going to have to do a couple of things just to get the environment set up. So we have opened up PyCharm, and one of the first things you'll notice down here is that if you look at the Python interpreter, Python 2.7.10, which is what the native one running on my uh, OS Xbox here, my Mac, OS X, um, I don't want to be running 2.7. 
as I said, all the development was done on 3.5. Uh, I like to be on Python 3. It's the new version, um, Python 2.7. That's that's the last version from what I understand. Um, so we're going to want to move at the interpreter, which is the version of Python we're using, over to a new version. So we're going to type in PyCharm. We're going to go into preferences. We're going to just type in interpreter as far as you need to to get to here. And then we're going to change it, as you just saw, to Python 3.5. Then you'll see here that I don't really have any... Um, any libraries installed for Python 3.5, which is okay, that's fine. So normally we're gonna be able to install directly from PyCharm, so we'll, we'll see what's going on here. We will close down the Python version and then open that back up again. And you should see here that it, it has moved from Python 2.7 to Python 3.5, All right, there we go. 3.5, you can see that, awesome. We'll go back in and see if we can use the Python or the PyCharm um, interpreter and, and look at the environment to install libraries. You should be able to click the little plus button here, but apparently the environment isn't all set up yet, so we'll, uh, we'll bypass that because I don't like to wait. Not a patient person over here. So instead, we're going to go to the terminal and we're going to type in pip3. So this is the Python package manager. Um, 3 means for the Python 3 because if not, we would be using pip for the 2.7, two different environments and we're going to type the words pip3 install pyhpe imc. And so what that's doing right now is this is going out to the um, to PyPy or the cheese shop, depending on how long you've been uh, coding in Python. And this will grab the most current version of the pyhpe imc, which is the library we're using to, really it's a wrapper around the requests library that is created to allow you to consume the RESTful API a lot easier. So right now we're, we're installing that. Everything's good to go. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type in pip3 install Jupyter space notebook. Right, so what's this doing is this is getting us the Jupyter or IPython notebook. Um, you can kind of find both. Um, IPython notebook was the original name. It's in the last, I think, year ago changed to Jupyter notebook. And this is a kind of an HTML5 markdown-ish um, Python interactive library that's going to make it hopefully really easy for you guys to get started playing with this library and learning how to use it. So we're going to wait for this to finish itself off. Should take a couple more seconds. Awesome. So that, that library has now been successfully installed as well. So the last step we're going to do here is type in Jupyter Notebook. So this is a command line tool, and what this is going to do is this is going to open up the Jupyter Notebook, which is really opening up a web server on your local machine, and give you kind of this interactive web-based environment where you can use a the IPYNB files that were in that examples directory. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that. But really quickly, before we do that, we're going to take a look at the Python environment to make sure that the PyHPEIMC library was installed directly. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to look at that um, Python console again. And we're just going to go in here. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And we're going to type in the words import PyHPEIMC. So what this does is this does a couple things. This imports the whole library into the namespace of our current software. And more than anything, it just makes sure that we can import it and that the library has been loaded successfully into Python. So we're good there. Awesome. We're now going to type in IPython, uh, sorry, not IPython, we're going to type in Jupyter Notebook. Hit enter. And now you'll be able to see that it's going to actually bring up a web server. You'll have a link here to be able to click in. There we go. And it'll automatically launch a browser, whatever your default browser is. I'll drag that over a little bit reposition that and we're going to navigate into the examples directory so the nice thing about this is this will open wherever you were so when you downloaded your github directory you might have to navigate over there find the examples so we haven't shown you a lot of things in this video but what we have shown you is really how to set up the foundation for the next few videos, which I think you guys are gonna find pretty cool, especially if you've had to set up uh, IMC in a production environment before, whether as, as your own environment or you're a partner and you're doing this for customers. 
See you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.